So a little while ago, the Chinese quadcopter manufacturer Acaso contacted me asking if I wanted to review one of their quadcopters. They primarily sell on Amazon and normally make these super simple cheap kind. I was like, that's not really my thing, and they said, we have a brand new product that we're working on that you might be interested in. It's some sort of a carbon fiber racing quad. And not knowing anything else about it, I was like, well, I guess I could check it out. It showed up at my door like this. Inside that box, it looked like this. Their slogan is, we believe you can fly. That's so sweet. Inside that box is a little booklet, which pretty much just says don't do anything dumb. And there's a giant block of foam. Inside that block of foam are lots of propellers, a LiPo battery balance charger for two and three cell batteries, a little screwdriver, some of these things, a 180 milliamp hour 25C 3S LiPo, and now the quad itself. Cool. They accidentally sent me the version without any FPV gear and sent me that stuff later. It comes with a pretty simple, nice feeling six channel radio transmitter. So it's time to power it up and see if any smoke comes out. The lights are a nice touch, but I'm not sure why they put red in the front and green in the back. That seems a little bit backwards to me. All motors work and turn in the correct direction. They seem to be using some generic 2300 kV 2204 size motors, which they printed their name onto. The Aris 180 quad uses a higher kV version of the same motors with different print. Now let's put some props on it and see if it really is ready to fly. Okay, so now that it's passed the works right out of the box test, let's take it apart and see what's inside. The frame design features a lot of separate parts held together with brackets and fasteners. This would lend itself well to replacing broken parts such as arms with spare ones, but as of right now, Acaso says they're not selling spare parts. Maybe later. Under the bottom plate is four unbranded 12 amp ESCs with BL Heli firmware. Under the top plate, we see the CC3D flight controller, which seems to be mounted with only two standoffs. So that's kind of weird. And then they mounted the board with the USB cable facing back, so it's kind of hard to access. Out the side would be much better. Under that is a very simple power distribution board wired like this. And the receiver is a six channel PWM type. Until their FPV equipment arrives, I've installed my own camera and video transmitter. There's just something about having a little race quad next to you in the car that's just awesome. I'm still a pretty big noob at flying quads FPV, but let's try it out. Oh, by the way, you arm it by holding the throttle stick down and to the right, and there's two flight modes controlled by the right switch. Back is self-leveling mode and forward is rate mode. You'll notice for the first flight that there's quite a lot of vibrations. I replaced the propellers with some better brand name ones, and that seemed to be much better. I later put some four-bladed dowel props on it, which are absolutely the best. The battery actually lasts a good 10 minutes or more, which is very nice. So I got their FPV equipment in the mail, and so I get the unique opportunity to see what components they're using. There's this cute little monitor with a built-in receiver, some sort of battery to power the monitor, which turns out to be a 2S LiPo in a box, a 200 milliwatt video transmitter, and this FPV camera with virtually no information on the box at all. I decided to change the battery connector to an XT60 just because that's what everything else I own has. I installed all the equipment and it all just worked right away. Same channel and everything.
Alright, so I broke an arm pretty easily, but I figured out a way to patch it together with a thick layer of super glue, then fiberglass to soak it up, and then finish with a little bit of epoxy. Alright, so now what I actually think of this thing. This is not a maximum performance race quad, and it's not going to win any real races. In fact, there's not really anything special about it. But I kind of like that. There's a huge upfront cost and learning curve to building one of these yourself. This quad is an affordable way to get started while still providing the opportunity to learn more about them. Some RTF quads are so compact and integrated it's hard to work on them. But this one's pretty good. You could take all these parts and just put them on a different frame, or you could put different parts on this frame, or you could try a different flight controller or use this one on something else. Once you break it, you still have all the parts, and you could even make an airplane with them. The flight controller is a CC3D, and you can connect that to LibrePilot on your computer and change some settings like the roll rates and flight modes and stuff. I brought the roll rates up from around 360 to 720 degrees per second, and now it's very snappy. Thanks for watching.